5G. Here we are back in the Target Center. We got our people. Oh! Oh, the show is blowing up. That's why they got us on the juice. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Give the people what they want. Bertha Rossi Schlosh. Sorry, showtime. You ready? Let's do it. Comfortable? Again? Salute. Back at it again. Let's go. What's in the cup? Preconceptions cast more shadow than light. See only what you're told to see, and you'll miss so much of me. Convention hides my depth and dimension. Alive and breathing. So save your stereotypes, standards, and tiny boxes. Hearts are being words I am authentic, unapologetic, driven without doubt, unique on my own. It's inner blood. Unstoppable together. A selfish play for the finish. There's no space we can't occupy, no promise we can't fulfill. Watch madness. We seek redemption. No! Boston misses at the buzzer. We have a legacy to honor. And here, in plain sight, a fullest self, dreams laid bare, I am not scared to be seen. Just imagine. From monochrome to multidimensional, no longer defined by roles assigned. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's about winning basketball games. Projecting images of our design. We might as well just prove everybody wrong and prove ourselves right. We are the source of our own light. We're competing for a national championship. One goal for everyone. Watch us shine. No this is what we stuck together for. Something on the other side for us. Whatever you can imagine. It's all worth it. Wow. Again, I want to play. This just makes me want to play. But we're back. The Bert Tarazi Show, BTS in the house. We're on ESPN, uh, ESPN 2 today, so we must have done something right the other day. This is the deuce? This is the deuce. This so is what I live for. I think we need to take a look, see what everybody missed from the other night to maybe mentally prepare them for what they might see here. Or put a blindfold on. One or the other. One so or let's the get other. it now that we're comfy. Salud. So are you going to declare for the WNBA draft tonight or what? <laughs> That's funny. Haley, some of favorite players just dropping f bombs on TV. I've never even done that. We needed some balance, so we brought you in. Well, that's a big mistake. Well, you could have just literally been an all-star. Forget six, six man of the year. Like, what's next for you? Yeah, I burned that trophy. I'm trying to take people's heads right now. You're starting to get saucy. You're trying to get spicy. <laughs> I like that's the Balenciaga pants. Oh, yeah. Not need it. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you said it. Oh, you're not going to give her a techno for that, Maj? Whatever your name is. We love you, man. We thank you. Can we get a anything is possible before you go? Anything is possible? Anything is possible! I am. My brain's got to go with Bill Walton now. Diana, too. Have I crashed a Yukon party here? They're not they're not breaking any <laughs> records tonight. Nope. Somebody needs to shoot more threes. Just shoot more threes the whole game. Why not? <laughs> You're so oh, greedy, man. Stuart. Five. <laughs> Let someone else win something. Everyone's probably like, oh, I'm not going against NECA. I was pounding beers and cheeseburgers in college. The baby fat ballers. Oh, Baylor, Baylor does a claw thing. Baylor. Yeah. They, left, have one. they left that in the Sweet 16, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Hold, that, hold that thought, Bill. We're going to break, and we'll be right back. Where we got to go? Where's Snoop Dogg? 
Where is Snoop Dogg? Bill, we are asking the Bill, same question where, today. We want to know where Snoop Dogg is, If too. you find him, Bill, uh, let him know. Let us know. We're but looking for him. Even though we don't have Snoop right now, we do have an amazing guest list for today. I'm very excited about this one. Should we tease it a little bit? Give him the tease. We got LeBron James coming. Doris Burke, DB's in the house. Megan Rapino will be on set with us. I'm very excited about that as well. I mean, we got we got good guests, and then we might talk a little basketball too. We might we might actually might watch the game <laughs> today because it's this important. Time. This is a big one. This is a big one. All right, I think it's going to be a good matchup. I'm looking forward to really good four quarters. We got South Carolina. Who do you got? Ah. <laughs> Welcome back to the BTS show. We're here. It's the final, the moment all these players have worked so hard for. They probably did not sleep last night. Did you sleep the night before the final? Oh, absolutely not. You're, you know, you're ready to play. You're nervous. Very nervous. I remember uh, an alarm went off the night before one of the finals, like a, like a smoke alarm, some sort of fire alarm, woke us all up. Nightmare. So hopefully that happened to none of these players. <laughs> Fans, please rise if able and remove your hats to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad. Tonight, the flag is displayed on the court as being held by women community leaders from Minnesota, and the colors are being presented by the University of Minnesota ROTC Joint Service Color Guard. And now, please join recording artist Dana Cohen in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale this fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? I think we've got some starting lineups coming up. I'm trying to think of, of what it felt like 20, 20 years ago. It's a long time. <laughs> is that what it was? Two decades? I mean, my senior year, years is a little. My senior yeah, year is I'm creeping on two decades years too. Ago. Sheesh. I think this is when it really gets serious, right? This is when individually you really get into that mindset that you need to be really good tonight. And you're thinking about all these things, and then just all of a sudden they all go away. I don't know how they're going to stop Aaliyah. I wonder what the game plan is. It's going to be tough. I mean, you probably double team her, but she gets so much stuff just off offensive rebound. And I think Coach said it early. She, the, the ball finds her wherever she is. She has great basketball karma. Yeah, she You know, does. she's always in the right spot at the, at the right time. So it's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. I think for the Connecticut side, they have to find a way to limit her touches, which is going to be really difficult, like you just said. And I think... Paige has the ball out. I mean, yeah. it's obvious, but I mean, 
we, we talked about it in the semifinal games, but this game, even more importantly, Paige has got to play well. Kristen Williams has got to play well. AZ, AZ Fudd has to get involved early. Uh, you know, and on the flip side, South Carolina needs to knock down shots or they're going to be seeing a lot of five blue. A lot of five a blue. A lot of five blue. A lot of five blue. <laughs> Paige's jumper was working the other night. And she's always so great when she's attacking the hoop. And, you know, I, you can just see her getting a little bit more healthy as the days go on. Right. You know, these so things, she, was, she wasn't doing this two weeks ago. And you can just see she's getting a little bit more comfortable with her body. And she's doing things like that. Yeah. What's, uh, what's fascinating to me about Paige, she wants to be a facilitator. I think that's like her right. natural, right? Like she wants to get people involved. And she'll start to learn. The only way to do that, the only way to do that well is to be aggressive and look for yeah. your shot. Because I think naturally she's more of a scorer than she's, you know, trying to be right now. Um, and, you know... Olivia's got to have a big night tonight. I mean, talk it's about challenge, the boy. biggest challenge in the building. You're not going to stop Aaliyah Boston, but can you make it really hard for her? Can you limit her yeah. um, and, and make her do things that she's not comfortable doing? That's going to be so hard. So generally speaking, when you play against a team that has, like, a dominant player, whether right. it's a post, a guard, do you subscribe to the, hey, listen, they're going to get their 20, so don't let anybody else go off, or we have to limit not let them get their 20? You know, I'm kind of, I, I go back and forth depending on the supporting cast, but we talked about it earlier. Can they get Boston into foul trouble? Yeah. If she's in foul trouble, she can't be aggressive, she's not on the court, can they figure out a way to do that? And in college basketball, I think they have a, a hard time targeting and pinpointing matchups that can help them in that way. They don't approach the game that way. No. I don't think. They Which don't is probably that. something they won't do tonight either. <laughs> <laughs> Right, like if this was the WNBA, we would be trying to find any weakness oh. Aaliyah Boston had, whatever that was. And what would that be? And we would exploit it. I think, obviously, in the WNBA, we're talking about different athletes, but even against Connecticut, yep. I think I'd be putting her in pick and rolls as much as possible. Absolutely, you'd bring to her your up point. and Absolutely. put her in ball screens and make her guard it time after time yep. in different situations and different... Um, but this is what the kid does, though. She just affects the game on, on every end. You um, made a really good point. The things she does... You can't stop because they're not, it's not an offense they're running. It's right. not, she just has a knack for being in those right places at the right time. It's tough. And you know, it's like, I'm sure the same conversation we're having, Coach Rama had those conversations about Aaliyah. The same conversation Don Staley's having about Paige. Right. And now, so what do you think that conversation is about, about Paige? Paige? Like, what's Don doing in oh, their practice? You know what they're going to do to Paige. They're going to be in her pocket yeah, all night. Make her uncomfortable. And they have the defenders to do it. Absolutely. I think the one mistake NC State made, they went underneath every single screen. And when you have a player like Paige, the minute she gets comfortable. Yeah, it's over. Everything it's becomes over. very easy. And, you know, when you muck it up and you make it hard, uh, you know. I felt that way when they played earlier in the season. I forget where they were. The Bahamas. Yeah. South Carolina beat Connecticut. That felt like... South Carolina just physically outmatched Connecticut. Just imposed that right. physicality, and Connecticut didn't know what to do with it. Well, and physicality is going to go both ways. Obviously, South Carolina does it just with brute force, and then Connecticut has to find a way to get some pace in the game pace, to win yes. them out. And I know. That's my thing. So people, I feel like people downplay that a lot. I've said this during the WNBA season. Now, like, when you play with pace, it's the same as being physical. Yeah. You are wearing teams out Absolutely. in the exact same way. Absolutely. I know. It doesn't, I don't think it gets talked about enough or focused on enough. It's a different kind of activity that you right. have to put up with for 40 minutes. It's like when I used to, <laughs> there'd be a couple days a, a season, maybe a year, where at Connecticut, when we do guards post, right. every now and then we would switch it, and the guards would do the post workout. Yeah. You would hit me with that pad once, exhausted. It's, it's a different. But the but the post players, the minute they had to run, like do a like you know come off, make a move, go get a layup, right. exhausted. The conditioning is different. Right? Your totally body's different. just you know conditioned to something different. Oh, look at the hit big handshake the right look. here. There they are. Hey, Dawn, I like the green. I see you. Green for the money. I like the green. Gold for we the like, money. We like to look rich. We like to look rich. The coaches are fitted. The teams are ready. We'll be back. To start this game off. All right, back on the BTS show here on ESPN2 in the lovely Minnesota. It was raining. I mean, snowing today. That was a little alarming. I was alarmed by that. I don't know about you. Hopefully, uh, I mean, I said rain, so I'm going to work with that. Hopefully, they make it rain tonight <laughs> and we see a good performance. It would be nice. You know, I'm looking for a high-scoring game. 
Hopefully that first game for both of them, they got the nerves out. I think you could see every team was a little on edge of how to come out. And we always say these games, you can't, you can't just be out there. You have to grab them by the neck. And like Don said, both teams are undefeated in national undefeated. championship games. Undefeated. Undefeated. That, that was, I mean, listen, that was a pretty good clapback. Because I'm sure some reporter asked her. Absolutely. Right, like, oh, UConn, they're 11-0 and in national championship games. Like, how do you feel about that? And she came with the... Well, I'm undefeated too. She is. She's one and zero. She's one and zero. And actually, Don said something the other night. Like, it doesn't have to be pretty. Just no. win the game. Yeah. And I think sometimes you forget when you played in these games. That's why I don't like to watch them. Like, I just want to think of them. Oh, we won the national championship. We were so good. Oh yeah, watch our games. Yeah, I'm oh, like, no. I remember did not, we did once. Yeah, we were terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, we it won a so championship. Bad. Like, I couldn't even dribble. That's an amazing start for South Carolina. If they're hitting that shot. So that's what happens when a player hits one early, right? There's two ways to think of it. Yeah. One, you're like, all right, you hope they hit it early because then they're going to take it more. So if it's a player, you're okay shooting. But right. then if they hit it early, they continue to hit it. It's going to change how Connecticut is able to help off of players right. to really do what they want to do, which is stop Aaliyah Boston. And, and he, obviously we talk about Paige a lot and we talk about, you know, AZ a lot. But I think this is a game where Kristen Williams' athleticism for UConn has to stand out. She has to find a way to play in transition, play fast, play off the rip. Because if you let South Carolina get set, yeah, should no, I preach? A problem. We'll preach Go a ahead. little later about the length. <laughs> Not ready for that yet? No. I got to get warmed up. This is a good sign. We, need, we, need, we, the UConn Huskies, need Edwards to play well. Yes. Are we seeing a little? Yep, we're seeing some five blue. Yeah. We're really excited about our guest. He is the king, literally, of the basketball court, but also the king of the fits. We see you, LeBron. We, like to, we wanted to show you a little something ourselves. We wanted to get your approval. We wanted to get your approval. We know that you're trying to build that bigger table. We wanted to know if there was room for some solo cups. Oh, absolutely, especially when y'all bring in the cups. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you. Um, we're going to get started with a little shout out to Love Is. Megan and I have partnered with you and Uninterrupted to create Love Is. It's a mission driven brand that empowers the queer community through action. We've partnered with trans and non-binary folks and artist Hey Kid to design a dope hoodie and campaign that defends trans rights. Um, it launched earlier this week. Hoodie got sold out quick. I didn't even get one. Quick. Oh, you got one. It's in the mail. Don't worry. Quick. You don't, quick. Worry. don't worry. Don't worry. But it does give back to amazing organizations. So, LeBron, talk to us about why you wanted to partner with Love Is and, and build it out. Well, first of all, um, I appreciate you all having me on the show, uh, you know, to be with two of the biggest queens in the world where we have today. I um, appreciate that. So, um, you know, I think, uh, I mean, we've been working with uh, yourself, Sue, and Megan for almost three years now in this campaign. And, um, you know, us at Interrupted, uh, Interrupt we always listen to the voice of the athlete and, and to hear, you know, what you guys were, were, were driven about, what you guys were passionate about. It meant so much sense to us about, you know, treating people for who they are, you know, and creating more love and creating more peace, mm -hmm. you know, in this world. And, and, and that's what we need. I mean, everyone gets so caught up and want to talk about all the negative things that we have going on in the world. But until we can all come together and just talk about love and happiness and, and smile more and be, you know, be loving to whoever you are, no matter what you believe in and everything um, that goes with that, mm -hmm. then we can never see a change. But, you know, for us to have this campaign, what love is with yourself and Megan and everybody that's supporting now, uh, it, it made so much sense to us that Uninterrupted. And uh, we're happy to be on, like I said, year three with you guys. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, if you guys didn't know, LeBron and I collaborated on Space Jam 2 very uh, <laughs> closely. Hey, I'm in the background. And Sue's in the background. I'm in the background. Draymond, Draymond's still mad he didn't make it. He didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a little angry we didn't get an Oscar. Oh, for sure. We definitely deserve the Oscar. Year, we're going we're we're, on a commercial. Yeah, next year, we'll be next back year. with you in a minute. Back on the Bird and Tarasi show, we got our boy LeBron with us. D, I know you've been uh, aching to ask this question. <laughs> yes, <laughs> LeBron. So you obviously didn't go to college, which was a very smart move. If I had the opportunity to not go to college, <laughs> I'm sure I would have done the same thing. You can't say Ohio State. 
What college would you have gone to? You said I can't say Ohio State? You can't because we know you're a Buckeye through and through. But um, in a different world, wow. where would you have gone? In a different world, I probably would have gone between, and this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers, it would have been between <laughs> Duke and North Carolina. There it is. Oh, I it like it. Been between those did, two. Yeah, coaches, it was, did they even call you? Like, did they even well, send you letters? <laughs> <laughs> they did my freshman and sophomore like, uh, year. Once my junior year started, too, it was, uh, they was like, this guy's never going to touch the face of a campus. <laughs> <laughs> they got the hint early. Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, let me save my, uh, my phone bill. Because, you know, at that time, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's hilarious. Um, so, LeBron, we've got UConn. We've got South Carolina. Give us your thoughts. Uh, well, first of all, we got two uh, prestige and high, you know, successful, uh, you know, colleges right now going at it. You know, I think it's going to be between, uh, you know, you got the guard play, you know, at UConn, and then you got all the length uh, at South Carolina. So it's it's who can, you know, adjust throughout the game. You know, uh, you know, South Carolina, they're so big, they're so athletic uh, at their forwards and center positions. But then you got Paige and, and Z, you know, doing a lot of work on the, on the perimeter and a lot of other girls uh, with the UConn bunch. So it's size versus the, the quickness. So we, we're going to see which one prevails, yeah. you know, but... You know, you got two great, you got two great <laughs> programs, that's for sure. You know, it's crazy because we obviously play in the professional ranks and, you know, in these big moments, we're dealing with adults. And you know, when you're in the right. locker room, you're like, oh, that dude doesn't have it tonight. These kids are 18 and 19 on this stage. Like, who knows what's going to happen tonight? They don't even right. know. I mean, it's so, yeah, they don't even know. And there's so much pressure on them. Man. And, you know, it, I mean, we all remember when we were, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old and all the pressure <laughs> that we had on us, I mean, you know, either I was a rookie in the NBA and you guys were, you know, in a Final Four, which y'all did a lot at UConn when y'all was backcourt mates. And it's just so much pressure put on these collegiate athletes and these young kids yeah. that people don't understand. And they have to go out and produce. But, you know, more importantly, listen, you go out, you play hard, you do everything you can to try to get the win. And, you know, if, if you said you play hard and you can sleep better at night, you know, you, you definitely be sad if you don't win because we all work to want to win. And that's what it's all about. But listen, give it all that you got. And everybody be proud of you. Absolutely. Um, LeBron, we got another break. All these breaks, all these timeouts. Um, but we will be back in a let minute. Me go just yet. Can we, we got one more segment? Oh. Absolutely not letting you go. No. Okay, not letting cool. you go. But we will I'm be here. right back. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Back with the Bird and Tarasi show, back with the king himself. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about if you were to go to college, where have you gone? But with the NIL being a thing now, and I know that's something you did on the shop with Governor Newsom, D was there as yeah. well. Do you think that would have changed anything for you? Being able to do both? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, because I was in a situation where just financially, you know, myself and my mom, we were just like, I mean, struggle to say the least. So, you know, at that yeah. point in time, you know, I knew right away that me going to the NBA would, would change my mom's life forever, change my life forever. So, you know, with the NIL thing going on now, it would have gave me something to think about because I actually wanted to step on uh, a campus. I wanted to be a part of a, a, an alum and be a part of March Madness and see how, how much fun I could have with that. But, you know, my mom trumped all of that and gave my mom a better situation. They put my mom in a nice house with nice grass and things of that nature in a pantry. You know, that that, 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 that trumped <laughs> everything. So uh, that's what it came down to. <laughs> that's crazy. Imagine LeBron and March Madness. That I mean, you would, yeah. it would have been. And, and it's funny because we did this, what, three years ago. And at the time, it was still very early, and there was a lot of pushback. Like, people just did not like it. Obviously, the NCAA was not on board, as we no, know. At and now, all. this might actually, and this might actually save them in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely. They, listen, you know, people are always gonna, you know, uh, give you the side eye or think you're ruffling feathers when you do something that's new and something that's out of the box or something that nobody is thinking of. It's the same thing when, you know, Sue and Megan brought that to us uninterrupted with these hoodies and, and, and wanted to speak about what they were passionate about. And the first year that we came out with this hoodie, everybody was like, okay, well, you know, well, uh, should they be doing this? Absolutely. You know, and now everyone wants to be on board with it. So, you know, when we had that shop in a interview with Governor Newsom and you was on there, like mm -hmm. you said, DT, 
we knew we was going to ruffle feathers. You know, we had the O'Bannon brothers on there as well. Ed O'Bannon was oh, on there yeah. too. He was one of the guys that was part of that whole thing of like people controlling their name and likenesses. And you know, for us to be able to uh, see it three years later and see the change in all these student athletes and so many people re uh, being able to, you know, see reward off of their name, I think it's only right. I agree. I agree. You brought up, you know, wanting to step onto a college campus and never actually getting that. Do you feel like when we were at the Olympics and we were in the village, <laughs> did you get like a taste of what a college campus might have felt like? I, I, I think <laughs> I we're did. We're going to go into some and, Olympic and, talk here. No, listen, listen. I really believe that I did, and that's part of the reason why I stayed my ass in there so long. Uh, I didn't want to leave. Like I, like, I was there, like, representing the United States of America, but I was there, like, oh, my God, like, this is my college experience. Just seeing all these other countries all over the world. We're there to play ball. You know, we got swimmers there. We got, you know, we got track and field there. We got, you know, so many different, uh, you know, sports and sporting events, but you're there like you're representing your 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 school your program and, and that's what we were doing obviously so you played you played with Co under coach k for one of those teams like what is your best memory of coach k since you oh, want to go to wow. unc so bad <laughs> and i know i know that's the last thing coach k want to hear last night and I, you know i hated to see my guy take that 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 l last night in the final four mm. but you know, some of my, my biggest uh, my biggest fondest memories of Coach K was just like he did not uh, shy away from getting on our butts. You know, we're we're you know it was always that narrative like college coaches can't coach NBA guys. You know, they you know they they won't listen to college coaches. From day one, Coach K was on our butts. From day one, this is how we're gonna play. This is how we're gonna defend the world after we've lost the world championship. You know, we came yeah. you know in third in the 2004 Olympics. The world already are side eyeing us. They don't think we can become a team. They don't think we can sacrifice for one another. And you know, I come from West Point, um, you know, where it's nothing but sacrifice. And uh, we bought into that right away. And he looked us in our eye with that determination. And we was like, "Oh yeah, he's the guy." You know, and we respected that every single day. Yeah, I think we all felt a difference, like in all of you guys, when Coach K came around yeah. versus the Athens Olympics which I'm going to bring Absolutely. us back there for a second <laughs> and talk. I mean, we, we were all <laughs> we, we were all the young bucks. Yeah, we were all the rookies. We were the rookies. We were all the rookies. And I right. think all of our fondest memories probably come from G32. Oh, oh, it's not even <laughs> so a question. Shout out. It's not even a question. Not even. You say, I know every, you say everyone, those, everyone wants to talk to us about gold medals, and we're like, no, G32. What are you G32. talking about? Like, no, that's the only G32 thing I remember. is the only thing that <laughs> saved us from jumping overboard on the Queen yeah. Mary. That's <laughs> yeah, <so> true. <laughs> that's it. That's if so it wasn't true. for G32, I would have jumped overboard <laughs> and probably drowned in the water outside the Queen Mary if it wasn't for G32. <laughs> it's been well documented, but for those that don't know, G32 was the bar club lounge whatever we wanted it to be that night it was and, and that it was, was every, night, every night it was a different was, night yeah and what people also and that was on the realize, Queen Mary too we, we we yeah we made our own audience every night there was nobody yeah. there besides who we wanted to be there which was just us and we had a great time yeah. every night <laughs> we did those are some of my fondest memories it did get good Absolutely. though when we got to China Beijing they had they had like that's when the player lounge started. They yeah. would do that player only lounge. Some amazing no, memories. Absolutely. I remember you losing in cards. To who? Well, you were playing with with uh, Carlos Boozer's money or Jason Kidd's money. No, I lost Jay Kidd's money. <laughs> yeah, he he mentioned lost it. Jay Kidd's money. <laughs> Jay Kidd's money. Jay Kidd's oh, yeah, making Jay enough Kidd, money. If you now. Hear this, yeah. Jay, Jay Kidd's Kidd doing his thing. To this. We got yeah, we gotta we gotta get your money back, Jay Kidd, some way somehow. <laughs> Jake yeah. is doing his thing right now. D, you blew that money fast. I mean, it was like one hand, 20 grand. I'm like, these guys are just <laughs> jaded, man. Like, <laughs> you're talking about a pantry. You just get out of here. <laughs> well, that was several years later. That was definitely later, the best player D. lounge. Oh, yes, for sure. That's that's no question right. about it. That is no true. No question. I mean, and then, and then you talk about London. It was just amazing when you think about the people on those teams, on both, on both teams, like, legends of the game and obviously we got to spend a lot of time with kobe there and you know and, and you think back on those times and those are some of my fond fondest memories for sure yeah so lebron obviously i'm sure you enjoyed all three olympic experiences so i'm not I'm not trying to ask you to pick your favorite kid here but when you look back com 
you know, in those three different experiences, which team would have been the best? Wow, um, I'm definitely going to say the Redeem team. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, that, 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 that team in 08, um, you know, it was the first year that, that Kobe decided to play on, on Team USA. And then we had so much built up, you know, anger, you know, myself, Carmelo, CP3, uh, D. Wade, uh, from the losses that we had, not only in the 04 Olympics, but also in the World Championships in, in, in Korea. So, uh, or I'm sorry, in, in Japan. So we were just like, we had so much built up anger, but at the same time, we had so much that we wanted to give to, you know, Team USA and to basketball in general on reclaiming what we all believe is our sport, you know. So, um, you know, 08 was definitely the, the, the better team um, of all the three teams. And the only wild card is that in 2012, we added a, a, a skinny seven-foot uh, sniper by the name of Kevin Durant. So that would be the only thing oh. that I can like <laughs> oh, that say. That would be know, the only one to tip yeah, we, 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 I, I think some, some of, the, some of the, the viewers have heard of that guy. We, we, we you know, got that guy, <laughs> and, and our team became even more dangerous. So, uh, But the 08 team was, you know, we just had so much that we had to prove, and, you know, that's what it came down to. Yeah. LeBron, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was a pleasure. We always have an amazing time Listen. when we hang out with you. So cheers. Listen, so deep Good luck the rest of your season. You always got me. Thank you. You always got me. You're welcome. The Bird and Tarasi Show is presented by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. Chances of me watching it are less than zero. When you've been around those two as long as I have, I really, truly have no interest in hearing anything they have to say <laughs> on any topic, especially me. But I'm sure they were funny as hell. And I'm sure whatever <clears throat> I see they were drinking didn't, didn't come from the store. Very funny. Something tells me he actually wants to come on the show, and we know this because we have a very special in-game exclusive interview, one of its kind. Coach Oriema, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. This guy does it all. For joining us. This is amazing. We Coach, got some questions for you. We got, a, we got a couple questions. I've been hearing a lot that Paige has the ultra green light. Thinking back yeah, on it, do you think 100%. you should have Sue and I the green light? 100%. Which knew it. I knew, knew it. it. All I right, knew coach. You regretted it. Elite eight. You're up three against NC State. Six seconds. Should you have fouled? Yeah, hundred percent. That's what we thought too, yeah, right? We thought that. I mean, isn't it incredible the times we live in? These kids are actually making more money than you. Like, what do you think about that? Hundred percent, coach. So we, we thought, thought so. so. We, we thought always so. knew you were on our side. Yeah. Coach, we know you're busy. It's 22 to 8, so I can only imagine what you're thinking right now. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Good luck out there. Good luck, Coach. I mean, 22 to 8? I mean, think about him being in the situation and coming on this broadcast on I this know. show. I mean, it just shows you how versatile Coach has been throughout the years. And, you know, he can multitask, so he's going to have to multitask in this game because there's a lot of things. Well, look at here. It's... Look at here, Coach is just a star. <laughs> He's everywhere, and I'm not joking. I really feel like I've seen him carry his bag that way. I think he, I, I've He's got seen, that one leather joint. Yeah, I've seen him in that leather belt, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the bow tie, but he could probably add that. I don't know, but Sue, um, it's 22-18 right now, South Carolina. All the things that we thought were gonna happen is creeping into the game where UConn is having a hard time scoring the basketball, obviously. And, I mean, South Carolina is just playing really tough basketball. On cue. Oh, she just pulled out the bow oh, and West Matthews? Woof. Is there Jamal a Murray? Oh, West Matthews. <laughs> okay. It's Jamal Murray, too. West Matthews was the OG. Listen, I like West Matthews, too. But he was the OG. But it's Jamal Murray. No, it's West it's Matthews in, uh, in Portland, for sure. Anyways. Um, yeah, no, no you're right not. about South Carolina. Yeah. Um, they are physically dominating this game. Paige is going to have to get going, but they're right now, they're setting the pace, they're setting the tempo, they're setting the physicality. Oh, she thought about it. <laughs> and then she probably thought about Dawn. <laughs> we got a Vina on Aaliyah. 
And you know, it's the same advantage we thought we had when Westbrook was playing the four is all of a sudden now, uh, you know, a glaring weakness against this team as she gets an offensive rebound and puts it back. I mean, yeah. you know, basketball really is uh, a card game and sometimes you're looking for cards that aren't in the deck. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, I mean, we're staying, I guess, kind of sort of close, but um, no, I think if you're Don Staley right now, you're happy with your team. Not only are you hitting outside shots, like you just mentioned, they got that old board, and that's mm -hmm. really where I think they can take advantage of Connecticut, just crashing those old boards, which is something they do. Man, she's on fire. Well, we, we said this earlier, if you're gonna double Aaliyah and they're making threes. It's impossible. They it's win. Gonna be, it's gonna be a very hard night. And here we go, Paige attacking the basket. She's gonna have to force the issue a little bit more, get in the paint. Man, this is where they kill you. And this is where you have to go. You have to score in this phase of the game against South Carolina. So there's someone whose opinion, I feel like we can get on this. She's gonna know exactly yes. what Connecticut needs to do. Absolutely. Please welcome to the show, DB Doris Burke. Welcome DB, it's great to see you. What's happening you two? I, you did something today that I could not do, and that's have LeBron James on a show I was working. Oh, that's d <laughs> pop, pop. It's a, it's a G32 thing. It's a yes, G32 thing. Yes, it's a bond thing. that we sh will share forever. <laughs> yes. Um, but, but Doris, you have, yeah. you have covered the women's game. This very moment you have covered. Do you have any stories off the top of your head from your Final Fours that you can remember that have stuck out? Oh my gosh, I'll, I'll tell you a Diana Taurasi shot that goes down is one of oh. my favorite all-time shots in a pressure moment. I, listen, I can't help it, right? Uh, I, I like when I was accused of being UConn biased when I covered the Final Four, either as a reporter That's or an analyst. That's what they're saying about like, us? Yeah, it's common, oh, no, common they, thing here. They, yeah, they said, I said, they won like nine championships in the 11 years I covered them. What do you want me to say, UConn sucked? Like, no doubt. <laughs> um, but my favorite, one of my favorite, and D, I want to know if you remember this shot. It's you're playing in Texas in a national semifinal. And just like we're seeing tonight, you were a little bit physically out that. But you remember that game. It's, you know, Sue's gone, that crew is gone. You find yeah. yourself on the right baseline, the ball's in your left hand. Remember the shot? About eight to 12 Don't feet? Yep. Yeah. That's a hell of a shot. It was kind of a little bit behind the back. Yeah, tell the people what happened. It looked like a Larry Legend shot. You know, it was one yeah. of those things where you just got to make a play and it just works out. And it's one of those moments that kind of, you know, we were down 12 that whole game. We weren't playing well, you know, very yep. similar to this game. And there's those little moments that can change momentum. So um, we're going to need a little bit more of those moments tonight if uh, Connecticut's going to make a run. Because this South Carolina team, Doris, is good. Yeah. Like, this is a really, really, really good team. Yeah, look, look at this is they're just killing them on the offensive board. Sometimes I feel like South Carolina's best offense is second shot. And, um, you know, obviously such I mean, it's hard. And, and, and here's what you have to do, right? It's rare against the South Carolina team to get easy shots. And when you get them, you got to make them. And the other thing you can't do is you can't turn it over. Like your execution has got to be precise. It's got to be on point um, if you're the Huskies. But. You know, I give this team a lot of credit. You know, the the other show was talking pregame, you guys, about sort of how this season looked for the Huskies in November and December, level of frustration, who was out, out. I mean, it's pretty incredible, don't you think, that they've arrived at this point, at this moment? I thought Stanford was going to win, to be honest with you. If you were going to ask me who was going to win that Stanford-UConn game, I would have picked Stanford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sue had Stanford, too. That's a lie. But you know who did? Brianna Stewart had Stanford. Yes, and, and Paige she, told her about it. And she sure got a lot of text messages <laughs> after that became public. And I believe, Doris, tonight I was uh, in my hotel room watching my beloved Lakers, uh, and you yeah. picked South Carolina, so look at you. I did. Oh, yeah. she picked them publicly. It's a good pick. I, I did. It's hard to go against it, especially I'm, right now. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you I've caught, you know, just, just, pockets of women's college basketball halves here and there 
Um, I love that Stanford team. I thought they were fun to watch. I thought they were deep. I like Cameron Brink's skills in the post. Um, obviously, we know they're really well coached. Um, so I thought they had a good shot at repeating. So I give the Huskies a ton of credit. Um, but I'll tell you what this is making me feel like right now, right? Because I covered you guys from your freshman year all the way through. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking yeah, myself, oh, yeah. my God. All three of us are getting so old at this point. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Doris, look at us now. Look at us now. You're no. doing primetime ABC. We have a show. Life is good. <laughs> look kind. But you're the, Doris, your voice is the soundtrack to our college years. Absolutely. WNBA as well. But college, yeah. it hits a little different. And you're literally the soundtrack. They actually, um, the Big East game where we played Notre Dame, oh, yeah. I hit the game-winning shot. Like, uh -oh. that's your voice. Big time. Yeah. Like, I'll never forget that. Yeah. So you've played such a huge role. Um, we got to go to break. You know how this goes. Right. But we will be back in a minute or so. Thank you so much for being here. We got Doris on the other side, guys. Stick around. Welcome back to the show. The one player that has stood out the most today. Destiny Henderson. I mean, her name's kind of fitting right now. A player that I think you would have given these shots to earlier in the tournament is just stepping up big right now. Double Henny in the cup is ice cold right now. I mean, and, and, and she's kind of the unsung hero of, of this team. She knows the moments. She lays low for a lot of games where she knows she has to facilitate and just make sure she's getting people involved. But every big game I've watched this year, she comes up with these little moments, these little, like, two minute spans where she she makes the difference and um, not only is she hitting shots she's on she's on page she, yeah. she's oh, no. body she page the, and that's the, the one tone. thing that we talked about you got a body page you got to be physical against her you got to make her uncomfortable and she's done that she has and this is when i feel like if you're connecticut do you want to get Paige off the ball give her a breather don't have her bring it up have to handle all that pressure um, that's that's what I would be thinking and and we've talked about destiny. She's been the MVP in this game as of right now Doris Who yeah. is your MVP right now for the NBA? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you Sue I have had all three of those guys at one point or another as my MVP So Giannis has clearly closed the gap um, Embiid, when you want the eye test of Embiid you know, he's fluid, he's smooth, you know, his, his ability to handle doubles and think the game. I'm, I'm basically stalling to tell you that, that that vote is due on, like, the last Friday of the season at midnight, or maybe it's the last. And I'm not, and I'm not joking, I'm not popping out here. I will get texts and calls from the league basically saying, you've got to get your vote in, and here's why. And you guys are professionals, and so you would understand this. Like, our votes as the media basically impact these guys' contracts, which means tens of millions of dollars based on yeah. votes for all NBA teams. Think about Jason Tatum this year. And I don't know if that's right or wrong. I'm going to just tell you this, you two. I lose sleep over it. It is legacy. It's money. It's pride. It's competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if you if you pressed me today, Sue, and I had to vote, I don't have to. Earlier today, I would have said Nicole Jokic, and then Embiid went off tonight. And all three guys are having historically great seasons. So the answer is I don't know, and you can check back with me when I got to get my vote in. <laughs> so there's this one player that is. Um doing some special things in the desert by the name of Devin yes, Booker. Yes, he is. And you know, yes. this is always the interesting question about the MVP, and we have it a lot about the WNBA, about the NBA, is we, how much do we impact winning on, on the award? And, you know, when you pair that with the numbers he's put in, putting up and just the way he's played, even with Chris out for long stretches, yeah. with DeAndre out, um, and I think yeah. you can say the same argument with Jason. He's putting these huge numbers and his team's winning. Like, how do you balance yeah. that, you know, when you have the fate uh, of these guys in, in your vote and you impact their lives so incredibly? I just had this conversation with Devin Booker, Dave. And, you know, he said, I basically said, I, I said exactly what I said to you guys about what's at stake in the vote and how it keeps me up at night. 
And I said, there's money at stake. And he just looked at me and goes, lots of money. Listen, he's a lock for first. He, he's a lock for first team for me. Like, lock. Somebody on a 62 right now, 62 win season, is going to make all NBA. In fact, I want to tell you the truth. I made a mistake earlier this year. We get to vote for the all-star starters. I knew he and Chris Paul would be on the all-star team, and I copped out and used that as a reason. Right. Not, and that's ridiculous. They had he had earned the right. They were ten and four without Chris Paul, and his numbers like he was north of thirty points. He's been brilliant. D. Your points as well taken. I don't know if he finishes top five. That's how competitive that MVP vote is. Um, but it's hard. It's no joke. Like I, I remember stressing about it voting for all WNBA teams. I stress about it now. Well, the game, and you, too. you know, Connecticut's in you a couple. You got your solo cups. You know, I'm not letting you down here hey, with my what little. what you got, DV? <laughs> what you got, DV? Come on now. Oh, Cheers. G's in the house. We love it. We love it. <laughs> um, so Connecticut's cut it now to seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So yeah. we're inching in, um, bringing it back I to the women's game for a second. Go Can ahead, I go ask ahead. you guys a question who've been in this moment or have been in these kinds of situations? Because I think you can speak to it better than me. So they start out so, so tough, and now they've made their run. Like, when you battle up, how important is this to get it to, you know, hey, you know, even four, two possession game here at the half, and how much does that take out of you sort of pushing it back to this spot? Well, it's interesting you say that, because we've all been in those games where you're down, you make that push, you get it close, and what happens? You run out of steam, you run out of energy, the other team picks it up. So that's always the challenge because it always happens. And I just like to, when I'm on my teams, I like to break it down and, and kind of simplify. And it's just, all right, we've actually talked about this in the semifinal games. All right, it's a seven point game. There's 54 seconds. This is a little di different of a scenario. Let's say there's a couple minutes. You might say what you just said, DB, like, all right guys, we've played like crap. They, don't, they haven't even seen us yet. All we have yeah. to do, is cut it to five with a couple minutes left, and then what happens? They get yeah. tight. They get nervous. And that's what you want to do. You want to put that team in a position where they're on their heels. Yeah, I mean, and going into halftime, this this last minute, two minutes, it's huge. Um, there was a Final Four we played in. Yes, there was. We were up 18 against Notre Dame yes, in the we semifinal were. game, and Alicia Retai Hit a hits three a three in to, my cut face. It, to cut it to 15, which for some reason, just demoralizes still up 15 and I think coach had something to do with it because he harped on it for so long in the <laughs> halftime and then they came out and, and beat us so you know UConn's feeling really good right now and you can tell they're getting a little bit more scrappy and on the flip side start getting tight yeah that's the thing I'm telling my team all the time put that pressure right back on them because when you're trying to hold on to a lead what happens to yeah. you? You start managing the clock. You start thinking a little more. Maybe you have a fast break, but you pull it out because you're not sure. And that's when you know you yeah. have a team on, not necessarily on the ropes, but you right. have a team in a position where you can you can come back. It's a great yeah. question because it always happens. It always does. And I thought Dee's point earlier, guys, about, you know, just Paige have to start being a little bit more aggressive. The best players, right, when a good defensive team makes you beat them one-on-one, -on -one. so Paige makes that great move, boom, bucket. Then all of a sudden, it's like to me when Diana was in her final year, if she started to make shots, everybody else could just go, Whew, okay, our girl's cooking tonight, right? Yeah. And that's why I wanted the green light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> D, D, D doesn't think she, she uh, her, her light was green enough. I, I got, feel like her light, I got, light was I got, pretty green, though. Yeah, I got held back in a lot of ways in college for a lot of reasons. Oh, tell us. <laughs> Are we, oh, it's almost halftime. Oh, you don't want to share any of those thoughts? It's almost halftime. No, there's, there's 15 That's seconds. That's unfortunate. This is an important possession right here. Oh, is it? You want to talk us through it? Well, I, I would like to get, like you said, Paige off the ball a little bit, this high pick and roll. And there she comes off a double right. stagger. You know, and this is tough in college. You know, a kid that hasn't probably touched the floor, uh, you know, in the last couple games, and you come in, and you're nervous. Um, so that, that hurts a little bit going to the half. But that's what South Carolina was going to do. It was going to put a lot of pressure on the Connecticut post players to stay in the game, right? Like not get into foul trouble. But she just creates those types of mismatches and makes it really hard. Uh, all right, Doris, we appreciate you coming on so much. Always a pleasure to oh. chat. 
so Come great back to see anytime. you both. <laughs> hey, have a great telecast. You all are knocking it dead. It was so fun. I love covering <laughs> Thank you, DB. We love you, DB. Go Friars. Love Go you. Friars. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fans, we'll be staying here for the AT&T 5G halftime report at the end of the quarter. Megan Rapino is mic'd up and ready. She joins the show. We answer your questions using hashtag BTSWFF. See you soon. Welcome to the AT&T 5G Halftime Report. Special guest, Megan Rapino. She's here to talk all things, judge all things. We'll get into basketball, fashion. I think you see that hashtag below, BTSWFF. That is how you can ask us questions. We're ready to take any and all, probably with some exception. We are an open book here. Couple we're an open exceptions. book here. So we were just actually talking about how we say we when we talk about the Yukon Huskies. Should we not say we? You guys got to say you. I say mean, you. I just feel like how many championships they win before you got there? One. How many championships they win before you got there? Two. Okay. Still, we can't say we, you know? It's just like she's <laughs> passed it. She won 100 of them. Like, it's a whole. You guys built it. That's I feel a like good own point. it. It's already a come by. It's like, you guys love it. It's so fine. what's interesting is sometimes, not sometimes, we get questions a lot about this very topic. And I do at times forget, but also like to remind people when I was being recruited, like, it, they weren't all that. They had a lot of fans. I'll tell you that. They were South Carolina then. Like, the way South Carolina's mm -hmm. fans were, that was UConn when I was getting recruited. But they had one championship. They made it to another Final Four, and they hadn't been back to the Final Four. So funny enough, when we first made the Final Four my sophomore year, that we were like, we cut down the nets. Like, we were hype. Right. Like, we were so excited. We got back to the Final Four, is and that chair, was our championship. Is the chair of your first Final Four in our storage unit in Connecticut? It absolutely yeah. is. It absolutely <laughs> is. All the chairs are. <laughs> All they are. Yeah. I was like, what L is this? Lily's got the chairs, Lily's too. got the chairs. Yeah, the, the, the Final Four chair is it's like I know, the so trophy. It's about like that. our trophy. I don't really know the story about him. <laughs> So when you go to a Final <laughs> Four, the, the chairs they use for the bench, do story you get to keep Wait, those. Each player gets it one of those cool. chairs. Well, it's that's why when cool. Asia was up here uh, the other night, yeah, I'm like, talking about Asia that. feels like she's on the team right now. Like, she yeah. built that program she's down there. in a lot of ways. And she's, like, going through it. She's probably, like, playing the game in her head. Absolutely. The same with Angel. Absolutely. Do you feel that way about the Portland Pilots? <laughs> well, we had a bit of a downfall. Shout out, Frenchie. She's bringing them back. We all know Frenchie, Michelle French. She Absolutely. obviously went to Portland, played on that team, all the things. She's bringing them back, but we had a bit of a downfall, you know, but they need to get a little better before we hop back on the train, you know? All right, so Megan, if you were in college basketball right now and you were a senior, would you take your COVID year? What kind of senior? Am I like a paid senior or like a normal senior? <laughs> Am I making money or you're right? You're, you're a senior, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're, do you're killing it in the NIL. You're killing it in that, in that area. You're doing well. You're a good player, you'll get drafted. Okay, there's a couple com there's a couple co types of players. Like like Paige or Aaliyah, like they're gonna get whatever they're gonna get all the time. Like whether they go to the league or stay or whatever. I feel like there is a below range of players where like it might be advantageous both development wise and financially for you to stay. And then for some players like you don't have either option, so you might as well yeah. stay I mean, another for, year. For a lot of players, this, this, might, this might be the most money they make yeah. in their whole lives playing yeah. basketball. So you like should you capitalize just said, on that. Paige and Aaliyah, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter where they play. They're going to the make thing. that money. Yeah. But there are these kids that are playing at Fresno State, uh, Duluth, Minnesota. Like, they're superstars in their own little cities. That, you know, they're, getting, they're getting free shrimp and steak every night from the it's local true. diner. They're, they want, need to I live this life. I what did we get? What did we get? Free tanning sessions. Free tanning sessions. Terry, free shout cancer. out. Shout out, Terry. Free what cancer. Did, I know. Hey, you guys are great. <laughs> it was the late 90s. All right, so we have a social question. Okay. okay. So let's see what the fans got for us. All right, who has a better shoe collection? Mm. Sue Bird or Diana Tarazi? Well, we're both Nike. I'm assuming we both get the same packages. We have to coordinate most yeah. times. I know. So yeah, tell that story. So we got down <laughs> to the lobby the other day, and I was like, ooh, I brought those. And Sue was like, ooh, I brought those. But we didn't wear the same ones. So from here on out, we shall coordinate. We need to coordinate. So we yeah. came on this trip. We needed to hit each other up beforehand. Yeah. 
because we basically have the same stuff. How big is your shoe collection? Show them your hand. Uh, uh, what? Do the shoe storage on the, oh on the side? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was like, one, two, I don't have enough. <laughs> yeah, I have a boo-boo from building a shoe rack. You know what? I would I would venture to say they're the same. You're just a social media lurker, so you're not posting. Lurker? You know? I'm dormant. Every, hey, dormant. <laughs> dormant, but they word is out I'm, on you. I'm dormant. You're no. dormant? Sue's trying to figure me out, I mean, but listen, she can't. All right. The goats stay laced. We just know that. Well, we when Penny goes laced. to bed, I steal her phone. <laughs> we have another question. Sue and Diana, what was your favorite memory at UConn that didn't involve basketball? Ooh, should we bring up the band guy? No, we're not bringing up the band guy. You brought the band guy up. The band guy just got married. I know. So one of my favorite memories was um, my freshman Someone year. Someone off camera is freaking out. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, the band guy. What is this? Where are we going? The Five, men, the men, four. The men's soccer team won the national championship. Oh my God, And we went out story. that night. We did. And I got back to the dorm and I lost my boot. I couldn't find my boot anywhere. Is this where I step in? Is there a different version of the story? Yes. Okay, maybe I don't remember. <laughs> so we right. were, we were out. We were at the local <laughs> establishment <laughs> on campus. Doing our thing. We were the, the men's. We were at the men's, no, not Huskies. <laughs> Huskies. Tets. We were at the men's hockey team. Yes. Having a good time, soccer wins. Blah, blah, blah. They actually flew home that night and their bus pulled up as we're walking back to our dorms. The men's soccer team bus pulls up. So we're like I'm the so greeting happy crew. For him. We're thrilled, we're jumping around, we're like, ah. Oh. We're so they happy They get for off, him. Z runs over to give one of the guys a hug. She steps in snow, no. and on the way out, the shoe got lost. <laughs> so if you're wondering where your shoe is, it's in the snow in front of the field house. <laughs> I shall find that boot. What kind of shoe? It was a boot, I, like a I Timberland think it was a Doc or Martin like a, or something, you know, boots and hey, jeans. Hey, came back around, should have kept them. Boots and jeans. Boots and jeans All right. the club. Boots and Hold those legs. thoughts. Hold those thoughts. This is our halftime report. We'll be right back. This halftime report is presented by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. This halftime report is presented by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. Welcome back to the AT&T 5G halftime report. Before we hit that second half, Megan, give us some thoughts. Okay, you guys told the rebound and run story, right? What would Jesus do? That's what they need to do. There it is. There's like 1,000 rebounds happening for the Cox. And we can't have that. They can't be getting all the play, right? God. So we need to rebound. We need to box out. I don't. We? Am I saying we? Look at you. I know. Are you saying we? Married into the family. Wow. wow. Thank you, Anyways, Ted Lasso. Right. Get this rebounds. has been Go for the AT&T 5G Halftime Report. Megan, thanks for joining us. See you soon. Hey. Welcome back to the Bird and Tarasi Show, presented by AT&T 5G. We've got a really good first half, like intense, some swings, ups and downs on both sides. Good. South Carolina with the lead. We're joined by Megan Rapino, who just now, during halftime, brought up an infamous UConn story <laughs> that we want the rest of the world, y'all, to know about. <laughs> well, so we talked the, about Tara-isms. Yeah, we talked about Tara-isms. There's definitely Gino-isms. Is there Genoisms? I feel like what? I've heard 20 Genoisms. Exactly. We're yeah. about to share one. So He's when like the, the master of the isms. The isms, yes. So when the WWJD, what would Jesus do bracelets were very popular. Diana Did you was, have one? No. No, I did not have one. For some reason, um, I was not blessed with one. I did, unfortunately. Did you? You, you wore one? Oh. Yeah. Look Good at you know. now. Look at you I was basically now. in a cult when I was younger. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever. Well, so final four game. Who are you guys playing? You remember who? Was it Texas? I think we're playing Texas. Yeah, the, the game DB brought yeah, up. Yeah. Tough game, back and forth. You guys were down even, I believe. Yeah. It's a timeout, an intense moment. Someone on the team had a WWJD bracelet. Coach Ariama looked at it, gave a pause, yeah. and went, you want to know what Jesus would do? He'd rebound and run. <laughs> With a and little that, sprinkle of X-rated layers. Yeah, there was an F-bomb in there. Rebound yeah. and run. You better. So that was uh, the story Megan brought up at halftime. We wanted to share that with the world. And it's so fitting because basketball is not complicated. No. Like, if you can't get the ball, 
the same in in football. Le you foot. can't win. You know what I mean? Can't get it. Pass the ball, trap the ball. Take pass the, the ball, ball, pass the, the ball. ball. Take the ball, pass the ball. Pick and roll at the top of the key. key. <laughs> Lay up. So simple. It's it so is simple. simple. Yes, it's a, simple it's game. a game of inches at the same time. So those simple things yeah. are not always so simple. It is a it's clearly. a game of inches. Ask the Cox. Ask him. And they're taking those inches. Um, you, you know. Do you take those inches? <laughs> absolutely. When you're on the court, <laughs> you have to, every little piece oh of court you have to take. And I always talk about this with our teams when we're not playing well. It's like you have to take that space on the court. The team that dominates the space on the court, the same on the soccer field, that's the team that's going to win. And South Carolina has done that more than anyone else you gotta in this be aggressive. whole tournament. You've got to be aggressive. I feel like UConn was a little tight to begin with. Yeah. I feel like but South Carolina did that. That was no, South Carolina imposing. No, definitely. But I feel like in the in the whole grand scheme, UConn players are going to feel more pressure because they have the, the institution, they have the legacy behind them. And, like, South Carolina is sort of, like, new breed. They got a new vibe, new swag. Absolutely. And it allows them to play a little freer, which I feel like, I mean, I think pressure is always a privilege, and, and it seems like they're basking in it now. It's like, you know, well, 10 points. Okay, we're going to need a little bit more. Well, but make, no I one's lost like, the national championship game. I know. Both these programs are undefeated. I know. Undefeated. It's a good, it's a good matchup of, like, style and legacy and, like, the whole – the whole narrative yeah, around well, it's everything. Yeah, well, you know, the team that's been there for, yeah. God, how many Every Final year. Fours has Connecticut been in now? 14, 14 in a row. 14 in a row. I, I mean, if we just think about that. Oh, it's incredible. And not even being former Huskies. I mean, that is insane. No, it's like when people what hate on LeBron. And then he's like, he went to how many finals in a row? 10 in a row. He went to 10 yeah, finals in like, a row. Like, what how more you, can the man do? Right, but at the same time, and this is actually what's interesting about that topic, because we were there at the beginning-ish right. of the Connecticut dynasty. When you're trying to build something, it is there's a different pressure there, right? So South Carolina has a different pressure than what Connecticut is feeling. But when you're South Carolina, you're trying to take down the big dog. So in some ways, the pressure is like, you're, but, you're, which one do you think is but, easier? What do you think is harder? But you know what? I think staying I think, on top is harder. I think yeah. Don has these kids believing they're the big dogs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this season for sure. Yeah, uh, but I, I mean, think she's the got swag. there. I think Dawn has brought that mentality to that to that program. Like, nah, we're here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how long anyone else has been here, but we're here now. Yep. And they play like it every they time do. they step yeah. on the court. They do. It really would have been interesting. Dawn. It really would have been interesting to see what would have happened in the 2020 tournament, the one that got canceled because yeah. of COVID. Right. Those were some great storylines. I mean, I did a little studio work that year. You had South Carolina. Um, Ty Harris was the point guard leading the way. Kiki was on the team. Right. She was killing it. And they had some, there was something special about that group. But then you had that juxtaposition of the Oregon Ducks. Sabrina setting all the records, yep. right? Ruthie Hebert killing it in basketball. That would have been so Don's fun. fit today? What do you think? Yeah, hey, we got the fashion police here. She brought her own little satchel. You want to give the, you want to, you know, Shout we had, we had solo cups in our satchel. Megan is fitting, I don't know, can you fit a shot in there? Well, you know, when you go to the stadiums, it has to be <laughs> oh, <that's> your, transparent. <laughs> your hotel room key? This is my hotel room key. Appreciate that. Amongst other things, I had to take a couple things out. Absolutely. Give it to our girl, Lynn. Don't worry about that. Um, okay, Dawn, this fit is nice. I like her jacket a lot. Yo, this jacket. Oh. Go ahead, Paige. Whoa. I think I think Sue, you went YSL today. Don went um, traditional Louie. Shout out, rest in peace, Virgil. Um, Don brought a ten today. I'm gonna say that. You know that. What I about have, Coach Ariyama? I'm happy he's out of the dry fit. That's not flattering on anyone. And the shirt, no tie, and the sport coat—that's him. That's that's that is, a, that's his look. That's Charles Mann. I saw him after the game. The semis. I was like, you got jeans on. I've been wearing jeans all season. Yeah. Uh, oh. He's got, he's got his uh, Luigi There's like those vibe. like gray jeans on. It's like the nice jeans. Yeah, it's the gray jeans. It's the Chris gray Daly? Oh, oh, hey, she fired. can't correct. Chris Daly? Miss Daly? I literally yelled at her in the tunnel. I was we were like going <laughs> to get into the stadium. It was like kind of awkward. All the players walked by, and then we were just standing there. I was like, hey, girls. And then I actually hollered at Chris Daly. Chris? Not hollered at. Not. I didn't just literally didn't yelled that. at her. Okay, yeah, yeah. I okay, think. it got hollered at. Her. I got a CD. And here we are, 11-point game. 
So this was what we were talking about with DB, right? This is exactly the moment where you're like, 11-point game, we haven't even played our best yet. Mm -hmm. There's seven minutes. By the fourth quarter, let's make it. Let's make Hit this it. a five-point game. Because I feel like when you break it down and you make it simple, you can kind of. It's easily to. Di it's easy to digest as a player. It doesn't feel like this like insurmountable. You can actually achieve it. What happened? I didn't see it. <laughs> you know what happened. Oh. You know what I'd love to see more? I saw high, this. A high um, pick oh, no. and rolls oh. where the guards can make the decisions. I need to see yes. some rolling from the bigs. And honestly, I only ever want Kristen, Paige, and AZ to have it. This is where I'm like, why are you having Paige bring it up? Why are we wasting energy when somebody's picking you up full court? Oh, get her running off Is that something? just the 41-year-old point no, guard? No, because <laughs> she's going to get to the corner. The action's going to be for her again. Okay. You know? Um, and once again, we got two rollers at the post, which is never efficient. Like right there, go that screen drives and me not get insane. the ball. Insane. Why are you both rolling? Well, AZ's back in, in action, which is good for us. She's gonna yeah, do that. so AZ's only played, um, where did it go? Eight minutes. So from what What's we heard, that? she's she's not feeling well. She was woke up sick, didn't really do shoot around even. Okay. Oh, boy. I don't know, but um, this kid, Destiny, is, is really good. She's yeah. really fun to watch. She is um, fun to watch. You know, she, you can tell she really makes this team go. She gets them in the right positions. She gets the ball to the right people. I, I, I mean, she's really impressive to watch. I feel like she's a real product of Dawn. Yeah. Like, Destiny. new. She's, like, got her swag. She always has everything off court, but she's just, like, Dawn's like, do your thing. Have you seen her clothing line? Yeah. Yeah. Anything's possible. <laughs> but she also has, like, you know, the the one calf sleeve and then, like, the arm things and the headband and, like, her style's great and she's got all kinds of swag. And I feel like that's, you can see uh, a, a total contrast in style yeah. on, off court, everything, like, ethos, everything going on here. One is, like, old guard and totally traditional and so successful as you can't knock it. The other one's mm. a little bit new, and it's like a, it's, I think it's cool. I, I mean, think it's great for women's basketball. It's so cool, because when I was in eighth grade, I had this uh, Nike charm necklace that I got to the swap me, and I was, I was cold. You know, look how things that have changed. That is cold. It was a little Nike. It got tarnished because I used to shower with it. I don't think it was real silver. So and I thought, definitely that was, and I thought it was the coldest thing. These kids now, Gucci. Oh, no, they got it all. Uh, Nicole okay. Kazmarski and I, when we went to Christ the King, used to draw. We wanted the tattoo, never did it. Used to draw Nike check Dang. on our ankle. <laughs> like you got to be an Eakin for that. A tattoo. <laughs> listen, she got the henna tattoo. Listen, and then we would write the NYC. Remember that logo? Uh, the NYC with the check through Yeah, eyes? absolutely. Oh, we thought we were cool. We weren't. No, every time I check out one of these kids' Instagrams, and I know the NIL and all this, but I'm like, where's all this money coming from? God, we were so broke in college. So, Destiny broke. Henderson, do you broke leave? Broke college. Wait, Destiny like, Henderson, do you leave or do you come back for your COVID year? I mean, I guess if you win, you come back. I mean, if you win, you come she comes back. back. I think De you win, Destiny you comes back. Destiny comes back. She oh, has I think to come back. Win, I think she's, she comes back. she's one of those players that I think she has a great future in the WNBA, but she'll have the same future in a year. Like, I don't think the way she plays, winning or losing, is going to affect her draft, draft stock, you know, in a way where if they win, she's going to go top five. Look at them just creating havoc defensively. Yeah, it's usually, tough. Usually Connecticut team. And now, you know what? UConn did this to Stanford last game, made that offense look real weird, and now South Carolina is doing it to Connecticut. Usually our, our offense, it flows, it moves. South Carolina is doing a great job of just mucking it up. What would you guys run here? If you're If you're... South Carolina, what's the goal? And if you're UConn, what are you running to get buckets? Mm. Mm. You think they have cola? <laughs> they definitely have cola. I might run cola. Bear. <laughs> Baylor. There you go, Paige. I think, all right, if I'm South Carolina, I'm keeping it simple, to be honest. I think DB said it. Their best offense is crashing the boards anyways. So you can just play free, take whatever yeah. shot, and trust where your advantage is. Mm -hmm. You want to answer for UConn? Well, you know, it's it, these teams are tricky because you, you think of South Carolina. Well, they can't shoot the ball from the outside, but then that puts your defense at a disadvantage where you're not pressuring, you're not creating offense for yourself, especially when you're mm -hmm. not playing well. That's true. All right, we got a timeout coming. We're enjoying talking about the game. We're actually watching this time, so that's kind of fun. Keep it locked in. We'll be right back.
Time now for the AT&T 5G Fast, Reliable, Secure Spotlight. No surprise, Destiny Henderson, the player that has been setting the tone all night. Penny in the cup. I Penny mean, this kid cup. just does it all right now. She's controlling tempo, making shots, throwing bows. I mean, Megan, what do you think? Dude, did you just come up with the best nickname ever, Henny in, in the, the cup? cup? Are you <laughs> kidding me? You, be you better Are trademark you that now. Me? You better trademark that now. Yo, Lindsay, Dan, trademark it. Henny in the cup. Do the things. No, and then you can buy That's, it. She, you can have her buy it from you. Yeah, and then you license out for her NIL well, it's, deal. It's funny. You remember when websites were really popular? DianaTrossi.com yeah. was owned by someone. Yeah, you had to and buy it. And I was it. like, well, how can I buy it? It was like $150. Yeah. Well, you're like, so no, I'm right. not buying that. <laughs> Jesus, that's BS. Jesus from Jesus and Mero. That was like his job. Shout out Jesus. Shout oh, out Tommy. Right. to like find the domains right. that would be hot. Yeah. And he would go to auctions to get them. Mine was that's hot. Skill. It's a skill. Okay. I learned it was a skill. I bought it at the swap meet. All right, so Dawn's got the Gamecocks like doing their thing right yeah. now, okay? I mean, yeah. Um, so they're dominating. Their when, DNA is just coming out right now. Definitely. Like, and all the things that they're good at, high level. You speak of that DNA. We got firsthand experience with Don, both as a player, as a teammate, mm. and as a coach. And one of my favorite stories of Don, so it was 2004, she's in her last on, Olympics, Nita. we're mm -hmm. in our first, Van Chancellor is the coach, and Van was a player's coach, you know, so yeah, you could like, definitely. you could like back and forth swoopers. with him. Swoopers! So yeah, he called show swoop, <laughs> swoopers, throwing Jolly Ranchers Shout to the out crowd. Shout out swoopers! Shout out Van Chancellor for real. But Don, we went into practice one day, and Don was like, hey Van, my shoes have an alarm clock. 45 minutes, they come off. And I was like, what in the world? And he was like, oh, Don, I got, don't worry about that. No, Don, you don't worry about that. I got you, Don. Don, I say, oh, hear what you're saying, Ford. I got you, Don. And I was like, well, I need to remember Wow, look how that. swaggy we look with the Wow. What else? Got me looking good. We got wow. basil on our head. G32 got chanted on that very podium. G32 is a G32. only slight hint of baby fat ballers. Slight hint. Big no, yeah, we were. We, we actually yeah. um, we had just come out of baby fat ballers. Yeah. We were okay, we're okay, and then we entered another phase of it. Because someone cooked later. with butter. In oh Russia. yeah, double down. Yeah, someone put butter in our yeah, food. We didn't too. know. We didn't know. We didn't know. But we found out because every time we'd go to the supermarket, we'd, we'd be we had a the, chef in Russia. Yeah, we put the groceries out and we're like. Four more sticks of butter? butter? Why are we getting so much butter? Why are we getting so much butter? They must be doing something else with it. Why does this cheeseburger taste so good? <laughs> like, I love broccoli. I never, I never made the connection. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, tuna fish salad? Yeah, we're guzzling. What? I never made the connection with the amount of butter that was so being bought. So much butter. And the food. But anyway, share one of your well, uh, an Don Another Don story. Um, once again, 2004. Um, we were both rookies on that national team. We get to the airport on the way to Athens, and Don said, get over here, kid. And I'm like, oh, what she want now? What do these people <laughs> want from me? She goes, go get us donuts. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm national so player pissed. of the year. You're so pissed. I'm on the cover of SI? You're pissed. Was that you were riding? A magazine. I was riding Meg up before. Mega yeah. Shout out Meg. The only guy who walked around campus with a book and a dictionary because the book was so hard to read. Wow. Anyways, so smart. she goes, go get us donuts. And I'm like, so the whole time I'm walking to the donut store, just, you know, mopey. Yes. And I came back with donuts, but they'll never know what I did to those donuts <laughs> before they. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was another one. We were doing shooting drills. It was the first practice I ever had with the national team. And I was swaggy, had my big shorts on. I was like, I'm back to the long socks. old heads. You love those big shorts. And Don comes up to me. Socks. She goes, D, take those shorts off. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> she goes, Katie has small shorts. She needs big shorts. She made me in the middle of a shooting drill take off my shorts, give them to Katie Smith, wow, and put on the small shorts. And I was like, this is really fun. But honestly, I can't wait to go to Athens. As someone who never has the right size shorts, I never have the right size shorts. I appreciate that. I appreciate she was looking Dawn out for a girl. looking out for her girl. She was a point guard. She was looking out for someone else. I, I appreciate that. Was she that. looking out or was she punking you? Both. I think it was 50-50. You know, sometimes when it matches up, it's just the perfect combo. It's 50-50. It's the perfect combo. Oh, this Aaliyah Boston girl is just showing out in this final Man. four. She, she's Can she come out, out early? Sheesh. Does she come out early? No, I said, can she? She can't. She can't. She's not eligible. I mean, my hair's not pink right now, but can we just shout out Leah Boston for her amazing hair? Absolutely. Honestly, Leah Edwards, too. I'm just like, I'm totally. <laughs> skirt, skirt. 
I'm totally here for it. I think Ducharme. Love. So someone asked me the other day, like, oh, who's your favorite player on the team? There's some obvious answers. Paige, AZ, you can go on. Christine Williams is going to have a great WNBA career. Absolutely. Ducharme? I think the next wave of important WNBA players is the whole 3 and D category. Can shoot threes, can play defense. But to me, I would add another level to it. It's the Alicia Clark level can post up. It AC, matters. AC, where you at, girl? Like, when you have to guard. Uh -oh. We taking that time out? Are we taking that time out, Dawn? Oh, oh. we taking that time out. We Woo. want a game. We want a game. I don't even care who wins. I want. Oh, okay, Caroline Doty. Pressure's on. Ooh, the pressure. That's all you want to see in these games is the pressure. That's true. You want to see how they you respond. You want to see pressure. Exactly. That's the best part. The pressure's the best part. And we're gonna talk more about pressure when we get back because we got Megan Rapino who handles it well. We have a six-point game with a minute left in the third, and the Huskies have finally made a run that might scare South Carolina a little bit. I mean, Paige making plays for other people is huge. I know, we know how offensive-minded she is. And you know what? There's nothing like the three-ball to get you back on track. It's the ultimate equalizer. They can out-rebound you. They can out-muscle you. But if you can shoot the three, baby, you in. Storm's going crazy. Going Come wild. on now. A sellout, <laughs> Gamble and Ted's, <laughs> and then we'll go to the sports ball, and then Huskies. Where are we going, Sergeant Peps, DB Doe? Where are we going, oh, girl? Bidwell, rocks and Let's wings. Let's go, Bidwell, rocks and wings. No, you're right. So this is the one, uh, you know, Genoism, if you will, that I've taken with me through all time. Three is worth more than two. She's so profound. Three is worth more than two. So profound, Coach. But you know what? It, it's true though. It just gets it you really back in the true. game, and it does. there's nothing like making shots. To make, make you feel better. To make you feel better in every aspect of the game. But I mean, that's how I felt today in our workout. Exactly. Oh, like, you might not be able to run or jump, but if you can make shots, make shots you, you can play so all day long. <laughs> <laughs> cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> Salud. Cheers to that. I mean, cheers to that. Tell them, yeah. Big time cheers to that. Tell all right, Megan, we talked about pressure before we uh, uh, went to that break. There's a minute 11 left. Okay. So that's how much time you have to talk about this. Tell us what it's like when you step up to a penalty kick on the stage of a World Cup. Like, what is that? You know what? I've already gone through, like, total worst-case scenario. I'm like, like... You already you, lived it. I've already lived it. In your you, head. You get there, you lose wow. the World Cup for your country. That's it. It's the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. You get up there, you Roberto Baggio. I cried so hard when Baggio missed that penalty you kick. You get up there, you Baggio I it, cried. and... What do you Baggio do? It. What do you do? It's like, I, I, I feel like... I'd rather be in that moment than not. And Absolutely. so I'm willing to accept anything. And then from there, work on your craft though. Like do do the work, get your routine down, do all the things. Work and on then, your racket. I'm all What's about the racket. The racket. We're, change, we're, we're changing it up. We're changing the game. We're going back craft. into our racket. What's the racket? Gotta build a racket. I feel like I should be in New Jersey right now. <laughs> you do you have the leather I mean? on. I feel like I should be in New Jersey. It's vegan leather, by the way. Of course. Why not? Nobody Certified. thought um, it wasn't. I feel, I feel, I feel good right now. I feel like Connecticut's gonna bring that East Coast, you know, bunker mentality. But what cold. about you guys? You guys, I mean, listen. I feel like I'm, I'm talking about penalty kicks mm -hmm. at the age of 36, being able to be like, oh, I had, I had the frame of mind to just, you know, <laughs> would you go through my routine. You guys were in this. There's whatever. How many? There's 20,000 mm. people in here. 25,000 people. There's probably millions watching. Like you got the pressure. You have the legendary Gino on the sideline looking at you. Like you better make them free throws. Like, well, what's that like? You I got, remember you're carrying the, you know, 2002, you. 2002 national championship game. I was playing like absolute dookie. And do you remember that timeout? He calls a timeout and he rings me out for a whole timeout. And I'm just like a Leah Boston sad crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The original Jordan oh, cry no. face. And, the, and then I have all 11 Huskies like, do you got this? Like, you got this. And then, you know, we fast forward to the fourth quarter. Hen dog. Hen dogs in this game. She's, she's, she's in this she's game. Focused. And then he runs the last play for me. So, you know, like, yeah. there's these moments, there's these ups and downs mm -hmm. that you have to compete with. And, you know, you're only 19, 20 years old. But that's when you just go back on, you know what? One, you just can't care. And you played enough basketball and soccer to just go back to your instincts. Yeah. And that's and what this game's you've about. Done it's it. about instincts. Yeah, you've already, already done, done it. it. Yeah. Ooh. Sue, so what about you? You have like a lock, a lockdown memory. Do you have any like visceral memories? Are we going to break or something? 
Yep. Yep. Got it. Yep. Megan's good at this TV yep, thing, yep, isn't yep. she? We are. And I have questions for both of you when we get back, but I'll answer that when we get okay. back as well. All right, guys. Let's get into the nitty gritty. That fourth no. quarter, we got a nine point game. Coach Ariema, JJ, Plotten and Planet. We'll see what the Hussies come out with in that fourth. They're going to need something. Welcome back to the Bird to Rossi show. We have enjoyed having the one and only Megan Rapino. We like your hair too, Boo. You like it? It's Looking cute. Good. Yeah, you look good. good. It's Ooh, a fresh, it's a fresh cut. Approval? A fresh cut. Shout out Leslie Color. Fresh cut. Uh, no, up. it's been fun having you on here. I mean, I wish the world knew how much you actually love basketball and like genuinely. I'm a super fan. Get into it. I'm a super fan in the weirdest way. Get into it. I love it. It's pretty fun. I know. I mean, you have Penny. Shout out Penny as well, who Absolutely. I know is watching. Put the kids to bed, babe. So how often do you talk about <laughs> basketball with Penny? Uh, we are basketball junkies, junkies, addicts. It's always on TV. We're always talking about it. And you know, the best thing is when you, when I talk to basketball about Penny, she thinks about it way differently than I do. So I always get yeah. a different perspective, which I'm always fascinated about. And like, I'm sure you get a different perspective from Megan. Yeah, it's Penny fun. has a, a certain way of looking at basketball that I never think about. And it's always, I mean, we watch so much basketball that it's sickening. That's true. Now, D, I've played with you a long time. There, there has been moments where I've seen you give the bird to the, to the crowd. Happened once in Russia, but you never gave the double birds. I never gave the double birds. Capital One knew what they were doing. Double, double birds are rare. That's so tough when to you pull have off. Them, That's when tough you to have them off. in the building. You got to make the most of it. I mean, Cap One killed it with that commercial. Can we, can we agree? I mean, listen, I'm biased, but. It was amazing. They did a good job. It was amazing. Well, people do actually come up to you and like, are you related <laughs> to Larry Bird? <laughs> At, have you seen that? You Live and in person, I've seen that it multiple literally times. Happens. Since multiple times. The moment I was in Newsday, Long Island Newsday, <laughs> the moment the Long I, Island I, Chronicle. I cracked into the local paper. <laughs> yeah. People have been asking me if I'm well, related. You know so what's to actually meet him yeah. was You know what's crazy? crazy. Bill Amazing. thinks you're still related. Bill Wan still thinks you're Larry Bird's <laughs> and I have, long lost cousin. And I have my great aunt Dinah, Dinah. Yeah, who Dinah. apparently he... Uh, Gosh, she was a great player. That was very confusing. It's but no, legacy. Capital One killed it with that commercial. I also want to shout out Samuel Jackson because, first of all, we met him when I was in college. And he remembered. We were hyped. Mm -hmm. We met him in Europe. We were so hyped. He remembered. We had a good little chat about that. But he's the one... That was like, I told this story earlier. He was the one that was like, Spike, we got to do the double birds. We gotta and do they the were like, well, we need so an funny. alternate. We need an alternate ending just in case. He so was funny. like, Spike, double birds, double birds. You know, and that, 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 that is what we're talking about here. You have to be creative. The creative. game is about being creative. Like, the arts is about being creative. You can't do the same thing yeah. everyone else has been doing. And we've been having yeah. this conversation a lot lately. Like, you have to look outside the box and try things differently. Because if not, things just get passed down and passed down yeah. and keep doing the same old thing. you got to so be, be creative. Be creative. Sure. I know. And honestly, being in the same room with, like, Magic, I mean, Larry, listen, watching them interact. Uh, Charles, I mean, Barkley. Charles Barkley. <laughs> I Ledge. Charles. Ledge. Charles. Ledge. Charles. Shout out I mean, Charles. Charles. Kind of. Talk about so donuts. Fun. Charles Barkley so wanted to fun. draft Elena Beard instead of me. Shout out to AB, one of the best <laughs> defenders of all time. We shared a lot of great moments, but Charles wanted Elena oh, Beard Charles instead of me in the desert. So you know what, Charles? Charles is the best. Double birds. Charles is Charles. Double birds nah, Charles. Not Charles. Don't Capital listen. One, Don't double listen. birds. <laughs> all right, Megan, you know we love you. Thank you for joining. You've held it down. Held we it down. appreciate you. Cheers. Cheers okay. to you. Cha -ching. The captain's band is changing over. It's time I'm to out. exit the game. I'm out. The that, captain's that band's person, off. I'm faking an that injury. That person holding, holding had the a number thing. up. I'm bowing out. Later, Boo. All right, keep the sweet safe for us. We got yeah. a UConn timeout coming up. All right, here we go. This is that moment. They made their run and then it woke South Carolina up. It's always so hard. When we come back, we'll talk more about that again. Like, it's just always so hard to make the run and sustain. But that's what it is. What, that's another thing Coach Ariam used to say. Basketball is a game of runs. He would hammer that. Guess into what? Us. Do they have another run left? Absolutely. There's well, still we a lot. find out when we get back. Absolutely. A lot of time left. We're gonna have to find out when we get back. Welcome to Stormy Heights, where the windows are always Pella, because the weather is always changing. Pellis fiberglass is the strongest material for windows and patio doors. 
They're tested from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit up to 160. The fiberglass frame is even scratch and dent resistant. Hello Windows. Tested for extremes, designed for your home. The Bird and Tarasi Show is presented by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. And we're on. Who knew? We were ganging out over a Charlotte Sting shirt. Asia Wilson, one thing you can count on from her, she's going to dance. She's gonna, and she has and right now she's happy. And she told us if they were up 20, she would come crash the set. So... I'm glad they're only up 11. I mean, she she has a lot of reasons to dance right now. I mean, 100%. South Carolina is just beating them up on the boards. 38 to 19. You can't yeah, get doubled up on 19. the boards and expect to win a game like this. Um, and, you know, we, we said uh, multiple, multiple people have to contribute. It can't just be Paige doing everything. Coach said it before the game. And, you know, frankly, they just haven't had a lot of contributions. Hammer screen on the backside didn't work. I mean, South Carolina is on this right now. No, they're good. It's been an uphill battle. For UConn the entire game and so much credit goes to South Carolina for creating that for dictating that I mean there you go Henny so one thing that will get talked about today yeah. is her 20 points right now 7 of 15 3 of 4 from 3 28 minutes like that is efficient but what she's also done set the tempo defensively Absolutely. she always picks up the toughest matchup always creating so much on the defensive side. I hope she gets credit for that too tonight as well. I mean, she's made life so hard for Paige. Picking up full court, going over every screen. And Listen, that happened to Paige against Arizona with Ari, with Ari too. I mean, being physical with their best player is usually the ammo tool. What do to people a, do to you? Absolutely, they try to beat you up, get you off your game, same. rhythm, same with you. Remember right. those Spanish teams used to play you from behind, try to speed oh, you up. Oh. Um, you know, and that's what they've done. A little ISO for Boston here on the block. And she's just been patient. You know what I liked about her? She hasn't forced anything tonight. No, um, not at all. You know, they've worked it around and they've shot the ball well. And there this is, is the Achilles thrive. heel of Connecticut tonight. This is where they thrive. I hear you. Talk your... Yep. Talk all that, of that. Mom. All Talk of that, that, Mom. All of that. Victoria Sachs is another player that doesn't get talked about mm. enough on this team but that so we were talking about this earlier right? right everybody especially in the WNBA they always talk about a big three if you have a big three you have a chance to win but right. what is it always about that athletic four that athletic post player that's the most complicated position in the WNBA if you don't have one you're, <laughs> you're, you're done and if you do have it that's your advantage in almost every game all of them and then you, and, and, and these are games where you try to find that and um, she, there's another one where she's gonna find herself on a WNBA team and make huge contributions. So when we were going through our free agency in 2000, heading into 2021, so we've just won in the bubble season, mm -hmm. we're heading into this, we've got Alicia Clark as a free agent, Natasha Howard as a free agent, Sammy Whitcomb as a, right. everybody was a free agent. So we ended up losing those players, but one trade we made was Natasha Howard in New York, and a big piece of that trade was getting Kiki Herbert Harrigan oh, yeah. from Minnesota. This is a player, a South Carolina product, who's active. She might be a little undersized for the four, but she can shoot the three. Yeah. And she shoots it well. She just had a baby, so she's on her way back. So I'm really excited to see her in our training camp. Because to your point, when you have that player, we obviously have Stewie, but Stewie can't play 40 minutes. That's just not, it's not what this is, right? So if you have that player that can complement Stewie, can, can give her breaks and come in and be that four player, that's so, like you said, advantageous. Oh, it's huge, and, and we see that on, on most teams that, you know, win a championship is like you have that third, fourth player that is the offset that makes they the things, the whole thing. that makes the thing work when you know what you're gonna expect from certain players. It's so, that matchup that changes the whole complexity of the game. And you know what, Westbrook has played great in this game. Okay. You know, she's, she's been in and out of the lineups, and it's hard when you're in and out of lines to be aggressive, but she's really pushed the tempo, made a couple shots, and I like the force she plays with. And there's another one, you know, she's gonna be another WNBA, you know, prospect that's gonna really help a team. So if you had to pick, like, not an obvious teammate, right? Like, obviously you love to play with me. Obviously you love to play with Penny. 
you love to play with BB. Right. You know, these are like Olympians. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some like other players that you've played with through the years that like I'll, you just loved playing absolutely. with? Absolutely, I'll go really recent. Uh, this Brianna Turner kid that we have on the team right yeah. now from uh, Notre Dame is amazing. Yeah. I mean, the things that she does on the court without the basketball, I, you know, it's always easy to affect the game when you have the ball, right? Like, you can make all the decisions, you can really dictate, but when you can affect the game when you don't have the ball, right. those are the players that really complement your team. The Alicia Clarks, the, the Natasha Howards when you guys were, you know, uh, winning championships. And for us, it's always been that person, the Brianna Turners. Yeah. Um, and the Nicole Willinghams, which we both got to, right, you know, yeah. experience. The Tangela Smiths. It's these players that are so high level and they put you over the top. So probably Breezy right now. She's out in Italy, you know, trying to win a championship. So, um, you know, excited to play with her again. Good block. I mean, we talk about Jesus. those players. We should probably take a minute to give a quick congratulations. Swin Cash, Lindsey Whalen, people we played with. Congratulations on making it into the Naismith Hall of Fame. That's amazing. They're so deserving. I mean, the whole class, when you, look, when you go down the list, amazing but for those two i mean it's crazy it's people we're playing with now are going into the hall of fame it I'm is like, crazy oh. um but we'll go into the rock and rock and, rock and, rock and roll hall of fame the, ho the west hollywood the rock entertainment uh, yeah, hall of absolutely because you know the humanitarian <laughs> hall of fame <laughs> that one i loved i love the humans i was like dang we're in all the hall of fames thank you bill well and then you know shout out to penny taylor yes penny taylor you know the most under most underrated yeah. ferocious Penny was ferocious Penny was when she played. She just would go at so you tough. so hard. I mean, and she would do it with a smile. <laughs> I'm like, you know? I'm like, I didn't see the smile part. Oh, I just saw she the ferocious would. part. Maybe no, she just smiled for me. When you think about it, right, we go to the London. Okay, so Australia has just won Absolutely. a gold medal in 2006 in the World Championships. We play them in the 2008 finals right. in Beijing. Penny, from what I understand, Hurts her ankle and is like 24/7 doing treatment, She's trying to just get back broken on ankle. Fractured broken ankle, yeah. right? Just trying to get back on the court. So we probably got Penny Taylor at who knows 50, 60 percent. Right. Fast forward to the London Olympics. Penny tears tears her ACL yeah. right before. So in a lot of ways, as great as the USA team has been, we never had to play the Australian team true. with Lauren, Liz, and, and Penny. Penny. Yeah. It was only two, right? It was Penny Lauren, mm -hmm. and then it was Liz Lauren, and it was never the three And then of them. Liz Penny in... Yes. Oh, yeah, Liz yeah. Penny Liz, in... Uh, uh, like, where the hell were we? 2018? Yep. Yeah. yeah. World Championships? Liz Penny was Brazil, Rio. Oh, Brazil, Rio. Yeah, okay. 2016. Right, okay. Yeah. So we never had all three of them. Yeah. And there's every now and then, like, somehow this comes up. Right. And it's like, well, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I know, because we all know what a, penny a healthy Penny Taylor looks like. I mean, she was the MVP of the 2006 World Championships. Thank God. Um, Delisha Milton, Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah, we saw D last night. What up with D Nasty? Man. Delisha was amazing. D Nasty, D Sunshine. I love it. Last night she was D Sunshine. She was D Sunshine <laughs> last night. Incredible. She Delisha, a what a great teammate. She was a killer. Horrible to play against. Horrible to play against. But the best teammate best ever. Best teammate. We had some good times, man. You know, we're starting to get to these moments where in the game, you start looking up there, and at a certain point, you have to start playing desperate basketball. Yeah. Well, and I don't know what that. that means for UConn right now, whether it's full court pressing, whether it's double teaming the ball. Um, they're going to have to start doing things that are a little out of characteristic to, to get back in it because there's just no time to work the ball around. There's no time. I mean, that helps, but... Obviously not looking good for UConn. I'm trying to check these stats. Man, Henny's up to 24. We missed two buckets while we were chatting. Oh, I saw Henny. Henny in the cup. <laughs> she was doing it. We got one right here. You go under the pick and roll. And, you know, this kid just finds moments to be so effective. Um, and just a simple play like that where you're just reading the defense, getting to the rack. Nah, she's been impressive tonight. And this, is, and this is when UConn goes small and they have no rim protection. I mean, you know, they, they've really struggled finding, you know, the right five players to make it work. Yeah, well, against South Carolina, I think going small, you, you don't, I mean. You Unless really you're going to shoot the three ball Unless at a high shoot, rate, yeah. it's going to really, be It's, it's going to be too tough. hard. It's too hard. It's too hard. But I think my favorite, I mean, listen, Destiny Henderson might win MVP of this 
of oh, this absolutely. Final Four. And the best part is, everybody talked about it, South Carolina's struggles offensively leading up until this Final Four. They started turning on a little bit. They, mm -hmm. they like picked it back up against Creighton. We definitely saw it in the semifinal. They were able to, and now, I think there was a stat when we were in the makeup room. I think we were in the makeup room. They were talking about this stat where it was like, South Carolina, don't quote me on this, has never shot 50% three games in a row. Two games, yes, never three. Oh, wow. I don't know what they're shooting, but, okay, so it's not 50%, mm. but they're shooting well. They're shooting well, and they just basically haven't had these like yeah. out offensive outputs three games in a row. And today, yeah. they've done just enough. It's only 57, but it's just enough. Shockingly, I didn't do my homework for tonight's game, yeah, I'm like, so I that missed that. that. Fired when I looked at uh, the stats. Believe it or not, That's usually I go through my packet and make sure I'm very prepared for these games. But tonight, it just slipped my mind uh, while I was in the makeup room getting my eyelashes done. Of course. I know. Zoom um, in when they asked you for lashes. <laughs> can you show the people I, your response? I just said, "What the eyelashes? <laughs> what are we talking about here?" So do you want eyelashes? <laughs> said what <laughs> <I'm> lashes <laughs> you're like no nah, but can you uh touch up that pimple yeah, no, I'm just, I'm get one. this thing <laughs> you know and and you know different factors in this game hey I mean, you thought what about your freshman year AZ's freshman, freshman year. year my freshman year i had a i think in australia they call it a berry i went two for 15 one for 13 from three yeah. I mean, I just had a horrific night where I just was trying to get it going. And hey, it just, there's a girl. Oh, you missed it. There's my girl, Maj. I'll be looking for you this summer. You should have gave Sue a technical. It's Maj. I could have done anything, Maj, and I would have got a technical. I, I could have I, I know her name is Maj. I That's probably why I didn't get Maj, the technical. Maj, I could have winked at her and got a technical. I could have bought her dinner. I know what I got a technical. Apparently I could have said, "That's matters. a great call," and I would have got a technical. Technical. But I had, you know, I had a horrific game, and that really set me up for the next right. three years. And it was funny because in that game, you could probably show that clip, and Coach comes up to me, and he puts his arm around me, and he goes, yeah, he was nice I to you. I got you, D. I got you. We're going we're gonna to get through this. But then we, get, then we got to school, and he didn't talk to me for like uh, a year. I was like, he did not say that to my class. Well, you guys were upperclassmen. You should have known better. <laughs> I was just a freshman. I didn't know any better. We were juniors. Maybe if they didn't have that whole, like, seniors run the world it would have been different maybe or maybe if i would have played more during the regular season i would have been prepared but now <laughs> had to be on the bench prove a point hope he's happy you think you should have started that year i mean it was that was you know when you go back in in, in all your WNBA teams college teams and i'm sure every athlete goes to the, goes back in their memory bank and there's that great team that just didn't win yeah, that was that was that, yeah. probably the best team we yeah, ever had at connecticut for yes. sure we were probably 11 deep and Svet, for whatever reason shay me you swin asia right there all americans then you add on tamika chewy like you go a down b the list. yeah your whole class maria jess moore right the valleys who are in the building today they are in the building morgan valley they assistant coach Yeah, no, that was that was a crazy talented team. Man, I mean, listen, the game is essentially over. South I, Carolina, I do not see South Carolina brought brought their big girl pants tonight. They did. They sure did. They did. They um, and I think we can be honest. Listen, we want the Huskies to win for honest. obvious. Let's, let's be, be honest. honest for obvious reasons. Yeah. I think both of us talked about this. South Carolina had the upper hand. They were probably going to win this game. And to their credit, again, like they showed up and they did what they've been doing the whole season. And, and South Carolina, we keep talking about their struggles. I mean, this team is 34 and 2. Yeah. They know who they are. Right. <laughs> Nothing's shaking this team. And the game they lost against Kentucky, like they had that in the bag. They probably lost focus for that long. They lost against Missouri in the regular season. Like a, they have that crazy rivalry there. Oh yeah, that yeah. rivalry is wild. Absolutely. That Sophie Cunningham wild. made that little uh, yeah, rivalry she did. spicy. Yeah, she did. Then there was like a lawsuit. That thing is wild. I'm not touching that. Well, my, my senior year, we lost to Villanova in the semifinals of the Big East tournament. We didn't make it to the Big East final. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and that kind of set us, set us up for that tournament run. You know, you kind of refocus a little bit. You get smacked in the face. You're like, oh, man, if we don't pay attention, we can lose to any team. Right. South Carolina did, did the same thing. And Don, Don has well, just you know what? Confidence. You had a quote. You had a quote. I don't know. I'm sure you remember when I tell you, but. Don't quote me, I now. was at the game when you guys, when you guys, when we 
lost to Villanova mm -hmm. um, at Rutgers. Yeah. So what year was that? Is this the same year you're talking about? That's, that was our junior year. That was your junior year. Okay, I'm at that game. You lose to Villanova. History obviously tells the story. You go on to win the national championship. And the one quote you had was, that loss was the biggest win of the year. Absolutely. And sometimes that's what you need. And then uh, in this game, hopefully that's what it means for Connecticut for next year. Right. You know. Man, the South Carolina fans, you can tell. They're starting to feel it. They're starting to get loud. I mean, what a big year for Don. Uh, you know what I mean? Wins a Olympics. gold medal as a coach. You know, is really just putting her imprint on this team the minute she got there. And doing it her own way. Yeah, her own way. Look with at Asia. Asia's happy. There she is getting hyped. Come on up here, Asia. I know, Asia, you can come up if you want. Come talk your ish up here, Asia. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, looking at us? I mean, okay. yeah, that, that's for us. That's basically for us. <laughs> yeah, she's happy. She's hyped. Because you're right. For her, this is like, this is her program. Absolutely. She did this. She did this. And and, and there's something special about being a part of a program, yeah. you know? Like we talked to Jen Rosati yesterday, and she was like, I was on the first national championship oh, yeah. team. And we're like, yeah, Rizzo, like, you're the reason I went to Connecticut. Like, not yeah, Coach Yeah, we want to share that story? It was Jen Rosati. When Diana is asked, why did you go to UConn? The answer is? Jen Rosati, you know? I, I just loved everything about You were just a basketball junkie, huh? Oh my god. I would get home from school and I would watch every Connecticut game, which was weird being on the West Coast. Yeah, we always talk about how much basketball we played. And from three to when I went to bed it was watch basketball, halftime timeouts, go hoop, come right come back right in. Back. That's watch nice. college basketball, Lakers would come up at seven. You know, back then <laughs> it was K Cal nine. Watch oh. the, you know, watch Van Exel. Go shoot. That's your boy, huh? That's my boy. Nick Van Exel. Uh, so we were in a game like this. Obviously, it was the semifinals. We just talked about it against Notre Dame, where you clearly have there's a you know a point differential you are not overcoming. The clock is winding down. That mm. internally is the worst. Well, you fouled out. I so did you didn't foul out. have to feel it. Was I, my, was my <laughs> Reffing that game? Probably. Let me I go back in the film. Wait, I came down the court. It was probably just like this. We might have been down. Like, yeah. literally, it might have been just like this. 115. I came down the court. I pulled up for three in transition. I hear Coach Ariamo like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah. trying? I don't know. What else am I supposed what to do? What else am I supposed to do? Oh, uh, it's the worst feeling. I mean, this memory is great. This, I side. was going to say, this. It's the best feeling this on the other side. This feeling for them, one. And they know for, it right now. For South Carolina, it's going to be a memory that they're going to love forever. Forever. And for the UConn players, it's a memory you want to forget as quick as possible and get the season going or whatever's so, next in your, in your life. For these South Carolina players, they are going to love the city of Minneapolis oh. forever. Like, take me back to San Antonio. Take me back to Philadelphia. Take me to the Riverwalk. Take me. New Orleans, I, here I, I come. I go to this place, I'm like, this is, this is, this this is my is spot. This is our city, right? This is my city. They will feel that yeah. way about Minneapolis. Absolutely. For the rest of their careers. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah. One of them will get drafted to the Lynx at some point or play for the Lynx at some point, and they'll be like, oh, I ate at that restaurant before the national championship game, or this happened, or I partied here, I did this. Oh, it's starting to build. A, a lot starting of, to build. Yeah, a lot of questions were answered tonight of who the best team in the country is. 100%. Um, and, you know, uh, I think we talk about it a lot. All the pressure was on Connecticut. But, you know what? I think South Carolina came in here with all the pressure of thinking they were the best team. Mm -hmm. and, proving, and that's, proving they're and, the best team. I don't know. I think they thought they were the best team. Well, they think, had to prove it. I don't think. I don't feel like they felt like they had to prove anything tonight. Oh, there's like, this is they're what like, it is. This is who we are. And, and, you know, seeing Avina there, like, no matter whether you win or lose, what do you know? This is your last game ever in college. So this is why I can't retire. And I can't deal with that moment. It's, it's this unknown of where does my basketball career go from here. And it's, it's, it's a scary feeling, right? Yeah. Very scary. <laughs> Man, I'm so happy for them. Yeah. That's the best feeling right now. Right now, for the next 24 hours, you ne you can never recreate it. No. Right. You try to keep the party going, but this this one night, what they're about to do tonight, they'll never forget it. And that's you know that's where Band Guy came from. Band Guy. Congratulations <laughs> on the wedding, Band Guy. Yeah, Band Guy. Shout I mean, out. What a moment. I wonder if he told his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> the tangled webs we weave. <laughs> Well, you know what? It, it, it's the game we wanted, right? We wanted the yes. two best teams in the country with the two best players. Um, and it, and you don't always get what you want. So I'd be curious to go back and check that early run by South Carolina. Was it like 15 points we were down? Absolutely. Because UConn could never get over the hump. Right. Yeah. And that's what happens. Sometimes that happens yeah. in games. It's that one run. And now we get to watch them celebrate. Super dope for them. Super Boy, dope. Aaliyah Boston, what an incredible, what an, I, mean, I love this kid. What an I love incredible basketball kid. player. I love this and kid. And you know what I like about, you can tell everyone likes her. Likes her, yeah. Like, I haven't heard one thing other than this kid's great, right. best teammate, amazing person. Like, uh, I mean, her father yeah. welcomed you to welcome her country. To I, I mean, know. How incredible is that? And now, she's going down in infamy. It's going to be her and Tim Duncan, the most famous people from that I'll island. St. Thomas, absolutely. Yeah. One thing that Tim could never do was win a national championship. So this is amazing. It's pretty epic. Yeah. It's pretty epic. Oh, shout out Lisa Boyer. Boy, Lisa. Lisa was on that old Olympic run with us. And she was old school Cleveland Rockers. Yeah. You know that? Cleveland Rockers. Yeah. And she was actually really fun to have in, uh, in yeah. Tokyo. She's funny. I mean, actually, like, it, she's really funny. It's inc what Don has done in, in this yes. short time. And, and you know, nothing just happens overnight. The work she did at Temple for all those years, getting getting that program uh, on track and, you know. Look at the relief. In some ways, there's relief. Feeling. There's relief. I know Holly's about to grab somebody. And they played everywhere as if that was some type of, but today we're national champions. And happy oh, tears, Holly. <laughs> happy tears. What a happy great tears. So if you guys want to smile, here you go. And we're national champions. <laughs> we'll save that <laughs> smile, Leah. Right. It was hard, though. This is a tough UConn team. How did you get out to such a great start in this game? I mean, we had our game plan ready to execute. We knew that we needed to apply so much defensive pressure, make it hard for Paige um, and make someone else score. And I think we did that. And that helped our offense to run. It was a master class on the glass. How did the dominance inside really seal this win? We knew that we've been dominant on the glass all season and we couldn't change up, especially for this game. We knew it would come down to rebounding. All right, we'll remember this night, Aaliyah. No more tears. No except more tears you. except for our national champions, baby. Yo, when you're getting interviewed by Holly, you know you did something right. You made it. Mama, we made it.